I have 75% of my portfolio in just three holdings. If you then add the S&P 500, it goes in 91%. That's not my portfolio. That's this portfolio up here. We're going to be talking about this tweet from some random person. But we're also going to be talking about our portfolios, how we're structured. It's not necessary to have such a large portfolio. I've seen many people with not large portfolio, but so many stock holdings. I've seen people with up to 50 stocks and there's no need for that. You're spreading money too thin. But before I go into mine, Kirby, if you want to go in to a little bit on this tweet or what you've got with your portfolio. Uh, Haley, Haley, that's why I'm going to stick with Haley. Haley Invest. That's what the Twitter, the tweet handle is or the X handle is. I agree. Three holdings, four holdings, tops. I love it. And the reason why is because everybody here, I mean, again, question information received. Everybody always here, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But what if the basket's good? That's it. What if the basket is good? You can always get more eggs. But what if the basket is good? So what people tend to do is they may have you know, $1,000, $2,000, and then, like you said, they in 35, 40 stocks. Let's say you got, you know, $5,000 and you're in 20 stocks. Let's just use that. So one stock in your portfolio might have $100 in it, $200 on a stock. That stock goes up 100%. You're at $400, $500, $600. But the rest of the stocks tank, then you lost all the profit. The truth of the matter is, is when you have so many stocks, most people, most laymen, most people that can't, don't have the time, cannot sit there and understand the balance sheets and what these companies are doing and how they're uh, the governance or how this company is being managed. They don't have the wherewithal, they don't have the time, they don't have the energy to follow these companies over and over and over again. I am a huge proponent of what she said. A lot of it is in index funds. Index funds, they have a historical track record of 100 years. And when I mean index funds, I'm talking about the SPY. Uh, you can go VOO out there also. You can go NASDAQ 100. They have a long track record of history of what they're doing. You have people that actually that's paid to understand the companies that's in there. And then they turn the companies once a year. The, the management expenses is the lowest in the industry, by far the lowest in the industry. So why go buy a whole bunch of stocks that you don't know about instead of buying a, a concentrated basket that's of good stocks historically good uh, and in her she got four holdings and she had the index fund i mean if i had the same portfolio with just four holdings total it would be 75 it'll be 50 percent s p 500 25 percent nasdaq and then the other 25 percent and some you know a mix of uh, aggressive growth uh, individual stock and then one dividend king or aristocrat that's where my four holdings will be i don't have to do nothing sexy fancy the compound interest will keep compounding the dividends will keep compounding i will reinvest the dividends and life goes on but people want to go out there and do all this fancy sexy stuff and then five ten years from now they didn't quit gave up because their portfolio is not going nowhere or they're sitting there talking about how the stock market is rigged. Stock market is a gamble. Why don't you just follow the blueprint of people that's already done it before? Alex, what you got? Yeah, I agree. Um, I do the same. Keep one dividend king. I have a mutual fund and then two single, two other single stocks. I, you know, and I, I learned this especially early on and I'm glad and you had given me the tip, but I had that mindset too. I, I think I had at one point like 10 stocks and you were like, just condense it down. You only need three to five. Um, and it makes sense because the more money that you can put into that, the more it will grow. Like you were saying, if, if you have 10 grand in a stock it goes up hundred percent, you're up at $10,000. 
But if you have 10 grand spread across 100 stocks or 1,000 stocks, then, you know, you're just, it's, that's just ridiculous. And especially investing in the same sector. So not just, you know, investing in, um, you know, you don't want five stocks all in the same sector either. Would you agree? You know, you have five. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You have five stocks that all the companies and deal with coffee. You know, that's that's another thing. Just pick one out of all of them. And um, I see a lot of rookie investors make that mistake, but it's not necessary. You know, just stick to a few. And my favorite uh, advice that you've given me was diversify asset classes, not, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about diversification in stocks, like just diversify your asset classes, business, real estate, stocks, different asset classes. And I think from, you know, from that strategy, you can, you can see good results, but back the truck up. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I like, I like the fact that you brought up the diversify asset classes. Cause just think about it. Most millionaires in the United States become millionaires because of real estate. Usually they invest in single family homes and they just get a lot of them. They're not diversifying. They're not buying single family, multifamily apartment complexes. They just buy a single family home. Most of the people are buying them in their area. So that goes back to the adage, condensed portfolio, focus on what makes money and you plow money into it. Like me, I'm a multifamily investor. I mean, I do have some single families, but I'm a multifamily, but I just keep focusing on my niche in that sector. I buy to rent. I don't buy to flip. I don't buy to wholesale. I don't do none of that. Buy it, rent it, go to the next one. Buy it, rent it, go to the next one. If I want more income, raise the rents. That's it. Rents repeat, rents repeat. Stock market, we already talked about how the portfolio was set there. I just keep plowing money into those same those same stocks, the same indexes on a on a scheduled basis, every two weeks, every month. I just keep investing there, keep investing there, keep investing there. Business, same thing. Keep investing in the ones I got and looking for more in, this, in the same thing and just keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm not sitting here trying to say, oh, I, I got to get a read. I got to get Google, Facebook. Uh, Meta, get all these in the tech sector. Got to get all the social media. Uh, when they get to cars, I got to get Tesla. I got to get Ford. I got to get GM. I got to get um, Lucid. No. Index fund, take care of that. But then if I see a stock that's just outperforming or a stock that's just low, uh, extremely undervalued, like uh, Amazon back in the day or Amazon earlier this year, plow the money. Tesla, when it came down, I think it was down to the uh, low 200s. There, something like that. Nothing sexy, nothing fancy, and just keep going. Keep plowing money. Another thing I always see people do is they have, like you said, $10,000. They put the $10,000 there, and then they just stop. Oh, it's going to grow to a million. No, keep investing. Yeah. Uh... But I think the reason why they, the reason why they stop it's because they don't even know what they have. Yeah. They say, I'll put the money there. Let's just see what happens. They don't go sit there and study the balance sheets. They don't sit there and listen to the conference call. They don't read the transcripts from the conference call. They don't know nothing about the company. They may know who the CEO is. They may know what the company do, but they don't have no understanding of the financials. They don't understand. Like when people tell me about different REITs and all these dividend stocks, if it's not a king or aristocrat, I don't care because I need them to keep growing a dividend. The reason why... Uh, and, but it's a million stocks out there that pay dividends. But people don't understand the dividend has to be paid with earned income, not borrow the money to pay it. They don't even know the coverage ratio of the dividend. They don't have a clue about none of the stuff that's important to be invested in these stocks, but they just doing it off a of friend. You know, that's why people are still buying meme stocks. They don't understand that it was because you know, it was a unicorn moment where the people wanted to stick it to the hedge fund. That's all it was. It's not a long-term investment. 
the people are hoping that they get that one more moonshot so they can get out, get in there and then make some money. Will that moonshot come again? Maybe. But will people get out in time? No, because they're too greedy. Like AMC, people bought AMC at $10. It goes up to $200, $300, and they don't want to sell it. You had the, the cryptocurrency. They were buying it for less than a penny. It's going up like Dogecoin. goes up to almost a dollar. They didn't want to sell it. Now it's back there to the pennies, and they're sitting there wondering what happened. Because people are greedy. Don't overcomplicate stuff. Just get in, keep putting your money in, know what you're investing in, and go about life. That's the easiest way to financial security. So let me say, guys, if you have any comments, let us know down below. Hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.